Firefly is um, the source of probably more joy and pain than anything I've done. It was, to me, um, a new kind of storytelling. It's this wonderful combination of a future and, 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 and a past. It basically tells us, you know, this is us in the future. Our, our problems are the same. We're just more of us spread over more planets. It was about nine people looking into the blackness of space and seeing nine different things. That, to me, is what's interesting. Action! When you have a Joss Whedon on, on your payroll, as the studio did, you know, obviously they were looking to try and get another project out of him. And so he, at one of the early meetings, said to them, well, I've got this idea that I've always played with of doing some, this sort of show. And they just were eager to get a show from him. So I said, oh, yes, great, 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 let's do it. So I wanted to get a show that took the past and the future and put them together by making them feel like the present, by making... Uh, a show with not only troubles that people could relate to as opposed to aliens or bumpy foreheads or ambassadors or things that you know are not part of everyday life but like getting a job getting out of trouble um, you know stuff like that that was very simple put it all in the present and give it a sort of you are here feel I got to read the various uh, incarnations of the script and boy I thought that looked neat uh, it was a western, but it was in space, and there were horses, and there were guns, and there were cool people on a spaceship. When I delivered Serenity, the two-hour pilot, the network um, kind of got cold feet about it. Um, they felt, uh, you know, they didn't want uh, a long sort of story that took its time explaining who everybody was. They wanted to jump in the middle of the action. That was kind of the Fox dictum was... You're in the thick of it, let's go. The initial results, they, they made, made the network nervous um, that the men, the men didn't respond as strongly as they thought they would and that the women responded more strongly. They wanted a little more humor injected and particularly in the character of the captain. The idea originally was that he was very closed off and over the course of the pilot, we found out why. And then over the course of the series, we saw him, you know, we saw he was a decent man and we got to see him warm up. And they said, wow, we, we only have a certain amount of time to hook the viewers in to a new property. We need to do it more quickly. They wanted to get in with some action, get in with some jokes, and come in right in the middle of an adventure. But I had nine characters with, you know, very involved stories and a world nobody had seen before that was culled from all different cultures. So there was just a huge amount of visual and oral and character information for people to absorb in an hour. Rather than not making the show, we of course tried to work with them on that score. Tim and Joss were very eager to certainly please our partners because they're financing the show. They told us they needed to see sort of what the first couple episodes would look like. You know, what, what does this look like as a TV series? I mean, we've seen this pilot, we're still not quite sure what it would be week to week. So in order to convince them to pick up the show, uh, we came up with the story for, for the train job. And they thought that seemed okay, uh, but really what they wanted to see was a script. And they wanted to see it by Monday. So we had two days to write what was, in essence, going to be a new pilot. We scrambled to make the train job and explain everything in the second episode, which was then the pilot. And we still wanted them to air Serenity first, because we felt no matter what, uh, this was such a complex new universe with so many characters that really you needed that Western two-hour um, introduction to this world to really understand it. Uh, sadly, uh, the network did not agree, and they aired it later. A lot of the pressure of being a show that might be canceled at any moment um, really helps you. Uh, it doesn't help your digestion. It doesn't help your marriage, but what it does help is um, your storytelling because and you go back and you say, what is the most important thing I need to feel? What is the most primal story? What is the thing that is going to show how great this crew is? You know, how um, you know, funny they are, how brave, how disjoint, whatever it is you need. What do I need? Get primal. They would break a story and, you know, come run to the set and be like, oh, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. And it was just like, it was just these incredible... You know, Joss and Tim, sort of their minds are just, you know, 
always going, 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 and, and then we'd get the scripts, and it was just, I mean, they were like gold. We wouldn't get the first drafts. We'd only get the shooting draft, which is good. It protected us from whining, I guess, and saying, I like that other line. It was nice. I wanted to say that in Chinese. Joss had a really specific vision in his head of, of sort of what happened between now and when Firefly is set, and the notion that sort of the only two superpowers that survived were the United States and China. The idea was your most basic white trash person can speak Chinese. You're the person, you know, with no education, who, you know, was the last person you'd expect speaks Chinese off the bat. And um, it just gives it a lovely kind of lived-in texture. As far as the Chinese goes, I resented it. They just randomly come into my head like, Wang Yi, Yijidishi. It wasn't easy at all. Chinese is not exactly you know, I mean, French is easier than Chinese. If it was French, it would be fine, but it was a little difficult, yeah. I like to think we educated the world by teaching them a little bit of Mandarin. Tai Shu Kung Yo Du Shu Da Ching Chao Dai. The writers would be in their room, in their writing room, and they'd come up with really funny things to say if you knew what you were saying in English. We only did phrases that we didn't need to know what they meant. Like, if he shouted, this way. We know he's saying, shut up. And if he goes, blah, 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 we know he's going, oh my God, I'm very surprised. He wouldn't put one word expletives that you then switch to Chinese, like man, and you know, wuz, and then explain it was these long, wu di ma, hu ta, de hu fong, kuang, de wai shun. And I don't speak Chinese, and I have even trouble ordering at Chinese restaurants. Every episode, I was making several phone calls to a group of people, and it was always a back and forth. Um, trying to get the right words. I did love the fact that you didn't have to bleep anything out and you could actually say, you know, frog humping, cat sucking, piss ant in Chinese and not have to worry about the censors going, oh, you can't say shit. For other things, more current slang, um, like baboon's ass crack per se, <laughs> I would call my friends um, who was more up on the uh, current colloquialisms and, and curse words in China or Taiwan. We had cassette tapes that we were to listen to to get the sound of it right, and most of the time none of us got the sound of it right anyway. I would sort of hear what it was supposed to sound like, and then I'd hear the actor say it. <laughs> and I bet there are a lot of people in China going, what the hell are they saying? <laughs> We wanted a, a, a multi-racial sort of mix of people because our, our statement was in the future, you know, there's two superpowers and everybody's mixed. That's why the way people dress are, are mixed and he wanted to, to have that reflected in these people coming together. My very original concept was a little smaller. Uh, I had like five characters. And then when I sort of said, okay, Millennium Falcon, yes, stagecoach, better, um, I realized, you know, I'm going to be living on this boat. And, and, and a lesson I learned from Angel is you really need an ensemble, and especially because I thought of this as more of a drama than an action drama when I first conceived it. When I actually got down to making it, I decided to go from five to nine. When each one of those characters plays ultimately a very important role in the show, it, you know, it really was incumbent up upon Joss and, and the casting team to, to find some great actors, and I, and I think we did. What I said to Joss in our first meeting was, I'm so not this guy. He's tortured, he's bitter, he's hollow, he's, he has no hope, he's, he's, there's nothing you know, lively and wonderful exploding within this man. I kept telling him, I'm not this guy, I'm, I'm really not this tortured soul. Ultimately, eight of the nine original cast members stuck. Uh, the one that didn't being Rebecca Gayhart, who was the last role cast, the part of Inara. Ultimately, it didn't, it didn't work out for, for either one of us, um, and that led us to discover Morena. I go in and audition and uh, basically just uh, stick around for a couple hours, meet Joss, hang out, find out I'm testing the next day, and then like start work the day after that. It was so fast, and it was mind-blowing. I remember going down from my network test into uh, the set where everybody was shooting and being like, great, this is where you're working now. <laughs> I was a big fan of Westerns growing up, and Warren Oates and Eli Wallach were two um, 
really kind of down and dirty characters, one from The Wild Bunch, one from The Good, Bad, and the Ugly, and I just thought, boy, it'd be great to play a guy like